The Good News According to Luke Chapter 1 As a number of attempts have been made to put together in order an account of those events which took place among us, as they were handed down to us by those who saw them from the first and were preachers of the word, it seemed good to me, having made observation, with great care, of the direction of events and their order, to put the facts in writing for you, most noble Theophilus, so that you might have certain knowledge of those things about which you were given teaching. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a certain priest, by name Zacharias, of the order of Abiyah, and he had a wife of the family of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were upright in the eyes of God, keeping all the rules and orders of God, and doing no wrong. And they were without children, because Elizabeth had never given birth, and they were at that time very old. Now it came about that in his turn he was acting as priest before God, and as was the way of the priests, he had to go into the temple to see to the burning of perfumes. And all the people were offering prayers outside, at the time of the burning of perfumes. And he saw an angel of the Lord in his place on the right side of the altar. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear came on him. But the angel said, Have no fear, Zacharias, for your prayer has come to the ears of God and your wife Elizabeth will have a son, and his name will be John. And you'll be glad and have great delight, and numbers of people will have joy at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord, he will not take wine or strong drink, and he will be full of the Spirit of God from his birth. And through him great numbers of the children of Israel will be turned to the Lord their God. And he will go before his face in the spirit and power of Elijah, turning the hearts of fathers to their children and wrongdoers to the way of righteousness, to make ready a people whose hearts have been turned to the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, How may I be certain of this? For I am an old man, and my wife is far on in years. And the angel, answering, said, I am Gabriel, whose place is before God, I have been sent to say these words to you and to give you this good news. Now, see, you will be without voice or language till the day when these things come about, because you had not faith in my words, which will have effect at the right time. And the people were waiting for Zacharias and were surprised because he was in the temple for such a long time. And when he came out he was not able to say anything, and they saw that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he was making signs to them without words. And when the days of his work in the temple were ended, he went back to his house. After that time, Elizabeth, being certain that she was to become a mother, kept herself from men's eyes for five months, saying, The Lord has done this to me, for his eyes were on me, to take away my shame in the eyes of men. Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin who was to be married to a man named Joseph, of the family of David, and the name of the virgin was Mary, and the angel came into her and said, Peace be with you, to whom special grace has been given, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at his words, and said to herself, What may be the purpose of these words? And the angel said to her, Have no fear, Mary, for you have God's approval. And see, you will give birth to a son, and his name will be Jesus. He will be great, and will be named the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the kingdom of David, his father, he will have rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How may this be, because I have had no knowledge of a man? And the angel in answer said to her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will come to rest on you, and so that which will come to birth will be named Holy, Son of God. Even now Elizabeth, who is of your family, is to be a mother, though she is old, and this is the sixth month with her who is without children. For there is nothing which God is not able to do. And Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord, may it be to me as you say. And the angel went away. Then Mary got up and went quickly into the highlands, to a town of Judah, and went into the house of Zacharias and took Elizabeth in her arms. And when the voice of Mary came to the ears of Elizabeth, the baby made a sudden move inside her. Then Elizabeth was full of the Holy Spirit, and she said with a loud voice, May blessing be on you among women, and a blessing on the child of your body. How is it that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For, truly, when the sound of your voice came to my ears, the baby in my body made a sudden move for joy. 
happy will she be who had faith that the things which the Lord has said to her will be done. And Mary said, My soul gives glory to God, my spirit is glad in God my Savior. For he has a pity on his servant, though she is poor and lowly placed, and from this hour will all generations give witness to the blessing which has come to me. For he who is strong has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for all generations in whom is the fear of him. With his arm he has done acts of power, he has put to flight those who have pride in their hearts, he has put down kings from their seats, lifting up on high the men of low degree. Those who had no food he made full of good things, the men of wealth he sent away with nothing in their hands, his help he has given to Israel, his servant, so that he might keep in mind his mercy to Abraham and his seed forever, as he gave his word to our fathers. And Mary was with her for about three months and then went back to her house. Now it was time for Elizabeth to give birth, and she had a son, and it came to the ears of her neighbors and relations that the Lord had been very good to her, and they took part in her joy. And on the eighth day they came to see to the circumcision of the child, and they would have given him the name of Zacharias, his father's name, but his mother made answer and said, No, his name is John. And they said, Not one of your relations has that name. And they made signs to his father, to say what name was to be given to him, and he sent for writing materials and put down, His name is John, and they were all surprised. And straight away his mouth was open and his tongue was free and he gave praise to God. And fear came on all those who were living round about them, and there was much talk about all these things in all the hill country of Judea. And all who had word of them kept them in their minds and said, What will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him, and his father, Zacharias, was full of the Holy Spirit, and with the voice of a prophet said these words, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and made them free lifting up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said, by the mouth of his holy prophets, from the earliest times, salvation from those who are against us, and from the hands of those who have hate for us, to do acts of mercy to our fathers and to keep in mind his holy word, the oath which he made to Abraham, our father, that we, being made free from the fear of those who are against us, might give him worship, in righteousness and holy living before him all our days, and you, child, will be named the prophet of the Most High, you will go before the face of the Lord, to make ready his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, through the forgiveness of sins, because of the loving mercies of our God, by which the dawn from heaven has come to us, to give light to those in dark places, and in the shade of death, so that our feet may be guided into the way of peace. And the child became tall, and strong in spirit, and he was living in the wasteland till the day when he came before the eyes of Israel. Chapter 2 Now it came about in those days that an order went out from Caesar Augustus that there was to be a numbering of all the world. This was the first numbering, which was made when Quirinius was ruler of Syria. And all men went to be numbered, everyone to his town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth, into Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he was of the house and family of David, to be put on the list with Mary, his future wife, who was about to become a mother, and while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she had her first son, and folding him in linen, she put him to rest in the place where the cattle had their food, because there was no room for them in the house. And in the same country there were keepers of sheep in the fields, watching over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord came to them, and the glory of the Lord was shining round about them. And fear came on them, and the angel said, Have no fear, for truly, I give you good news of great joy which will be for all the people. For on this day, in the town of David, a Savior has come to birth, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign to you, you will see a young child folded in linen, in the place where the cattle have their food. And suddenly there was with the angel a great band of spirits from heaven, giving praise to God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. And when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the keepers of the sheep said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come about, which the Lord has made clear to us. And they came quickly, and saw Mary and Joseph, and the child in the place where the cattle had their food, and when they saw it, 
they gave them an account of the things which had been said to them about the child. And all those to whose ears it came were full of wonder at the things said by the keepers of the sheep, but Mary kept all these words in her heart, and gave much thought to them. Then the keepers of the sheep went back, giving glory and praise to God for all the things which had come to their ears and which they had seen, as it had been said to them. And when, after eight days, the time came for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given to him before his birth. And when the necessary days for making them clean by the law of Moses had come to an end, they took him to Jerusalem to give him to the Lord, as it says in the law of the Lord, every mother's first male child is to be holy to the Lord, and to make an offering, as it is ordered in the law of the Lord, of two doves or other young birds. And there was then in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon, and he was an upright man, fearing God and waiting for the comfort of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. And he had knowledge, through the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death till he had seen the Lord's Christ. And full of the Spirit he came into the temple, and when the father and mother came in with the child Jesus, to do with him what was ordered by the law, then he took him in his arms and gave praise to God and said, Now you are letting your servant go in peace, O Lord, as you have said, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have made ready before the face of all nations, a light of a revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were full of wonder at the things which were said about him. And Simeon gave them his blessing and said to Mary, his mother, See, this child will be the cause of the downfall and the lifting up of great numbers of people in Israel, and he will be a sign against which hard words will be said, and a sword will go through your heart, so that the secret thoughts of men may come to light. And there was one, Anna, a woman prophet, the daughter of Phanuel, of the family of Asher. She was very old, and after seven years of married life she had been a widow for eighty-four years. She was in the temple at all times, worshipping with prayers and going without food, night and day. And coming up at that time, she gave praise to God, talking of him to all those who were waiting for the freeing of Jerusalem. And when they had done all the things which were ordered by the law of the Lord, they went back to Galilee, to Nazareth, the town where they were living. And the child became tall and strong and full of wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. And every year his father and mother went to Jerusalem at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up, as their way was, to the feast. And when the days of the feast came to an end and they were going back, the boy Jesus was still in Jerusalem. But they had no knowledge of it, and in the belief that he was with some of their number, they went a day's journey, and after looking for him among their relations and friends, and seeing that he was not there, they went back to Jerusalem, to make search for him. And after three days they came across him in the temple, seated among the wise men, giving ear to their words and putting questions to them. And all to whose ears it came were full of wonder at his knowledge and the answers which he gave. And when they saw him they were surprised. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? See, your father and I have been looking for you with sorrow. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Was it not clear to you that my right place was in my father's house? And his words seemed strange to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and did as he was ordered, and his mother kept all these words in her heart. And Jesus was increasing in wisdom and in years, and in grace before God and men. Chapter 3. Now in the fifteenth year of the rule of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being ruler of Judea, and Herod being king of Galilee, his brother Philip king of the country of Iturae and Trachonitis, and Lysanias king of Abilene, when Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wasteland. And he came into all the country round about Jordan preaching baptism as a sign of forgiveness of sin for those whose hearts were changed. As it says in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wasteland, make ready the way of the Lord, make his roads straight. Every valley will be lifted up, and all the mountains and hills made low, and the twisted will be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh will see the salvation of God. So he said to the people who went out to him for baptism, you offspring of snakes, at whose word are you going in flight from the wrath to come? Make clear by your acts that your hearts have been changed, and do not say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father, 
For I say to you that God is able from these stones to make children of Abraham. And even now the axe is put to the root of the trees, and every tree which does not have good fruit will be cut down and put into the fire. And the people put questions to him, saying, What have we to do? And he made answer and said to them, He who has two coats, let him give to him who has not even one, and he who has food, let him do the same. Then tax farmers came to him for baptism and said to him, Master, what have we to do? And he said to them, Do not make an attempt to get more money than the right amount. And men of the army put questions to him, saying, And what have we to do? And he said to them, Do no violent acts to any man, and do not take anything without right, and let your payment be enough for you. And while the people were waiting, and all men were questioning in their hearts about John, if he was the Christ or not, John made answer, saying to them all, Truly, I give you baptism with water, but one is coming who is greater than I, whose shoes I am not good enough to undo, he will give you baptism with the Holy Spirit, and with fire, in whose hand is the instrument with which he will make clean his grain. He will put the good grain in his store, but the waste will be burned in the fire which will never be put out. And so comforting them with these and other words, he gave the good news to the people, but Herod the king, because John had made a protest on account of Herodias, his brother's wife, and other evil things which Herod had done, did this most evil thing of all, and had John shut up in prison. Now it came about that when all the people had been given baptism, Jesus, having had baptism with them, was in prayer, when, the heaven being open, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove, and a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my dearly loved son, with whom I am well pleased. And Jesus at this time was about thirty years old, being the son, as it seemed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Yesli, the son of Nagai, the son of Mot, the son of Mattathias, the son of Samain, the son of Josech, the son of Jodah, the son of Yoanan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kusum, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Jesus, the son of Eliezer, the son of Jaram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judas, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Mattitha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadab, the son of Arni, the son of Hezra, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sirak, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Raphaxid, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalil, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Chapter 4 And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, came back from the Jordan, and was guided by the Spirit in the wasteland for forty days, being tested by the evil one. And he had no food in those days, and when they came to an end, he was in need of food. And the evil one said to him, If you are the Son of God, give orders to this stone to become bread. And Jesus made answer to him, It has been said in the writings, Bread is not man's only need. And he took him up and let him see all the kingdoms of the earth in a minute of time. And the evil one said, I will give you authority over all these, and the glory of them, for it has been given to me, and I give it to anyone at my pleasure. If then you will give worship to me, it will all be yours. And Jesus in answer said to him, It has been said in the writings, Give worship to the Lord your God, and be his servant only. And he took him to Jerusalem and put him on the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, let yourself go down from here. For it is said in the writings, He will give his angels orders to take care of you, and, in their hands they will keep you up, so that your foot may not be crushed against a stone. And Jesus made answer and said to him, It is said in the writings, 
you may not put the Lord your God to the test. And when all these tests were ended the evil one went away from him for a time. And Jesus came back to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news of him went through all the country round about. And he was teaching in their synagogues and all men gave him praise. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been as a child, and he went, as his way was, into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and got up to give a reading. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was given to him and, opening the book, he came on the place where it is said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because I am marked out by him to give good news to the poor, he has sent me to make well those who are broken hearted, to say that the prisoners will be let go, and the blind will see, and to make the wounded free from their chains, to give knowledge that the year of the Lord's good pleasure is come. And shutting the book he gave it back to the servant and took his seat, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he said to them, Today this word has come true in your hearing. And they were all giving witness, with wonder, to the words of grace which came from his mouth. And they said, Is not this the son of Joseph? And he said to them, Without doubt you will say to me, Let the medical man make himself well, the things which to our knowledge were done at Capernaum, do them here in your country. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, no prophet is honored in his country. Truly I say to you, there were a number of widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months and there was no food in the land. But Elijah was not sent to one of them, but only to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were a number of lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and not one of them was made clean, but only name in the Syrian. And all who were in the synagogue were very angry when these things were said to them. And they got up and took him out of the town to the edge of the mountain on which their town was, so that they might send him down to his death. But he came through them and went on his way. And he came down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee, and he was giving them teaching on the Sabbath. And they were surprised at his teaching, for his word was with authority. And there was a man in the synagogue who had an unclean spirit, and he gave a loud cry and said, let us be. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to put an end to us? I have knowledge who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus said to him, Be quiet, and come out of him. And when the evil spirit had put him down on the earth in the middle of them, he came out of him, having done him no damage. And wonder came on them all and they said to one another, What are these words? For with authority and power he gives orders to the evil spirits and they come out. And there was much talk about him in all the places round about. And he got up and went out of the synagogue and went into the house of Simon. And Simon's wife's mother was very ill with a burning heat, and in answer to their prayers for her he went near her, and with a sharp word he gave orders to the disease and it went away from her, and straight away she got up and took care of their needs. And at sundown all those who had anyone ill with any sort of disease, took them to him, and he put his hands on every one of them and made them well. And evil spirits came out of a number of them, crying out and saying, You are the Son of God. But he gave them sharp orders not to say a word, because they had knowledge that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he came out and went to a waste place, and great numbers of people came looking for him, and they came to him and would have kept him from going away. But he said to them, I have to give the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns, because that is why I was sent. And he was teaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Chapter 5 Now it came about that while the people came pushing to be near him, and to have knowledge of the word of God, he was by a wide stretch of water named Gennesare, and he saw two boats by the edge of the water, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the property of Simon, and made a request to him to go a little way out from the land. And being seated he gave the people teaching from the boat, and when his talk was ended, he said to Simon, Go out into deep water, and let down your nets for fish. And Simon, answering, said, Master, we were working all night and we took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they got such a great number of fish that it seemed as if their nets would be broken, and they made signs to their friends in the other boat to come to their help. And they came. And the two boats were so full that they were going down, but Simon, when he saw it, went down at the knees of Jesus and said, Go away from me, O Lord, for I am a sinner. For he was full of wonder and so were all those who were with him, 
at the number of fish which they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were working with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear, from this time forward you will be a fisher of men. And when they had got their boats to the land, they gave up everything and went after him. And it came about that while he was in one of the towns, there was a leper there, and when he saw Jesus he went down on his face in prayer to him, saying, Lord, if it is your pleasure, you have power to make me clean. And he put out his hand to him and said, It is my pleasure, be clean. And straight away his disease went from him. And he gave him orders, Say nothing to any man, but let the priests see you and give an offering so that you may be made clean, as the law of Moses says, and for a witness to them. But news of him went out all the more, in every direction, and great numbers of people came together to give hearing to his words and to be made well from their diseases. But he went away by himself to a waste place for prayer. And it came about that on one of these days he was teaching, and some Pharisees and teachers of the law were seated there, who had come from every town of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him, to make those who were ill free from their diseases. And some men had with them, on a bed, a man who was ill, without power of moving, and they made attempts to get him in and put him before Jesus. And because of the mass of people, there was no way to get him in, so they went up on the top of the house and let him down through the roof, on his bed, into the middle in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith he said, Man, you have forgiveness for your sins. And the scribes and Pharisees were having an argument, saying, Who is this, who has no respect for God, who is able to give forgiveness for sins, but God only? But Jesus, who had knowledge of their thoughts, said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is the simpler, to say, You have forgiveness for your sins, or to say, Get up and go? But so that you may see that on earth the Son of Man has authority for the forgiveness of sins, he said to the man who was ill, I say to you, get up, and take up your bed, and go into your house. And straight away he got up before them, and took up his bed and went away to his house giving praise to God. And wonder overcame them all, and they gave glory to God, and they were full of fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went out, and saw Levi, a tax farmer, seated at the place where taxes were taken, and said to him, Come after me. And giving up his business, he got up and went after him. And Levi made a great feast for him in his house, and a great number of tax farmers and others were seated at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes made protests against his disciples, saying, Why do you take food and drink with tax farmers and sinners? And Jesus, answering, said to them, those who are well have no need of a medical man, but those who are ill. I have come, not to get the upright, but sinners, so that they may be turned from their sins. And they said to him, The disciples of John frequently go without food, and make prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But your disciples take food and drink. And Jesus said, Are you able to make the friends of the newly married man go without food when he is with them? But the days will come when he will be taken away from them and then they will go without food. And he said to them, In a story, no man takes a bit of cloth from a new coat and puts it onto an old coat, for so the new coat would be damaged and the bit from the new would not go well with the old. And no man puts new wine into old wineskins, for fear that the skins will be burst by the new wine, and the wine be let out, and the skins come to destruction, but new wine has to be put into new wineskins. And no man, having had old wine, has any desire for new, for he says, the old is better. Chapter 5 Now it came about that while the people came pushing to be near him, and to have knowledge of the word of God, he was by a wide stretch of water named Gennesare, and he saw two boats by the edge of the water, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the property of Simon, and made a request of him to go a little way out from the land. And being seated he gave the people teaching from the boat, and when his talk was ended, he said to Simon, Go out into deep water, and let down your nets for fish. And Simon, answering, said, Master, we were working all night and we took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they got such a great number of fish that it seemed as if their nets would be broken, 
and they made signs to their friends in the other boat to come to their help. And they came, and the two boats were so full that they were going down, but Simon, when he saw it, went down at the knees of Jesus and said, Go away from me, O Lord, for I am a sinner. For he was full of wonder and so were all those who were with him, at the number of fish which they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were working with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear, from this time forward you will be a fisher of men. And when they had got their boats to the land, they gave up everything and went after him, and it came about that while he was in one of the towns, there was a leper there, and when he saw Jesus he went down on his face in prayer to him, saying, Lord, if it is your pleasure, you have power to make me clean. And he put out his hand to him and said, It is my pleasure, be clean. And straight away his disease went from him. And he gave him orders, Say nothing to any man, but let the priests see you and give an offering so that you may be made clean, as the law of Moses says, and for a witness to them. But news of him went out all the more, in every direction, and great numbers of people came together to give hearing to his words and to be made well from their diseases. But he went away by himself to a waste place for prayer. And it came about that on one of these days he was teaching, and some Pharisees and teachers of the law were seated there, who had come from every town of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him, to make those who were ill free from their diseases, and some men had with them, on a bed, a man who was ill, without power of moving, and they made attempts to get him in and put him before Jesus. And because of the mass of people, there was no way to get him in, so they went up on the top of the house and let him down through the roof, on his bed, into the middle in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith he said, Man, you have forgiveness for your sins. And the scribes and Pharisees were having an argument, saying, Who is this, who has no respect for God, who is able to give forgiveness for sins? but God only. But Jesus, who had knowledge of their thoughts, said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is the simpler, to say, You have forgiveness for your sins, or to say, Get up and go? But so that you may see that on earth the Son of Man has authority for the forgiveness of sins, he said to the man who was ill, I say to you, Get up, and take up your bed, and go into your house. And straight away he got up before them, and took up his bed and went away to his house giving praise to God, and wonder overcame them all, and they gave glory to God, and they were full of fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went out, and saw Levi, a tax farmer, seated at the place where taxes were taken, and said to him, Come after me. And giving up his business, he got up and went after him. And Levi made a great feast for him in his house, and a great number of tax farmers and others were seated at table with them, and the Pharisees and their scribes made protests against his disciples, saying, Why do you take food and drink with tax farmers and sinners? And Jesus, answering, said to them, Those who are well have no need of a medical man, but those who are ill. I have come, not to get the upright, but sinners, so that they may be turned from their sins. And they said to him, the disciples of John frequently go without food, and make prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But your disciples take food and drink. And Jesus said, Are you able to make the friends of the newly married man go without food when he is with them? But the days will come when he will be taken away from them, and then they will go without food. And he said to them, In a story, no man takes a bit of cloth from a new coat and puts it onto an old coat, for so the new coat would be damaged and the bit from the new would not go well with the old. And no man puts new wine into old wineskins, for fear that the skins will be burst by the new wine, and the wine be let out, and the skins come to destruction, but new wine has to be put into new wineskins. And no man, having had old wine, has any desire for new, for he says, the old is better. Chapter 6 now it came about that on the Sabbath he was going through the fields of grain, and his disciples took the heads of the grain for food, crushing them in their hands. But some of the Pharisees said, Why do you do what it is not right to do on the Sabbath? And Jesus said, Have you not seen in the writings what David did when he was in need of food, he, and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God and took for food the holy bread, which only the priests may take, and gave it to those who were with him. And he said, 
The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And it came about, on another Sabbath, that he went into the synagogue and was teaching there. And a man was there whose right hand was dead. And the scribes and Pharisees were watching him to see if he would make him well on the Sabbath, so that they might be able to say something against him. But he had knowledge of their thoughts, and he said to the man whose hand was dead, Get up and come into the middle. And he got up and came forward. And Jesus said, I put the question to you, Is it right to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil? To give life or to take it away? And looking round on all of them, he said to him, Put out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was made well. But they were full of wrath, and were talking together about what they might do to Jesus. And it came about in those days that he went out to the mountain for prayer, and he was all night in prayer to God. And the day came and, turning to his disciples, he made a selection from among them of twelve, to whom he gave the name of apostles, Simon, to whom he gave the name of Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was named the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, he who was false to him. And he came down with them to a level place, and a great band of his disciples, and a very great number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the parts of Tyre and Sidon by the sea, came to give hearing to him and to be made well from their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were made well, and all the people were desiring to be touched by him, for power came from him and made them all well. And turning his eyes to his disciples he said, Happy are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are in need of food now, for you will be made full. Happy are you who are weeping now, for you will be glad. Happy are you, when men have hate for you, and put you away from among them and say angry words to you, turning away in disgust at your name, because of the Son of Man, be glad in that day, and be lifted up for joy, for your reward in heaven will be great, for their fathers did these same things to the prophets. But unhappy are you who have wealth, for you have been comforted now. Unhappy are you who are full of food now, for you will be in need. Unhappy are you who are laughing now, for you will be crying in sorrow. Unhappy are you when all men give you their approval, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. But I say to you who give ear to me, have love for those who are against you, do good to those who have hate for you, give blessing to those who give you curses, say prayers for those who are cruel to you. If a man gives you a blow on one side of your face, then let the other side be turned to him, from him who takes away your coat, do not keep back your robe. Give to everyone who comes with a request. And if a man takes away your property, make no attempt to get it back again, do to others as you would have them do to you. If you have love for those who have love for you, what credit is it to you? For even sinners have love for those who have love for them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you let those have the use of your money, from whom you are hoping to get it back, what credit is it to you? Even sinners do so to sinners hoping to get back as much as they gave. But be loving to those who are against you and do them good, and give them your money, not giving up hope, and your reward will be great and you will be the sons of the Most High, for he is kind to evil men, and to those who have hard hearts. Be full of pity, even as your Father is full of pity. Be not judges of others, and you will not be judged, do not give punishment to others, and you will not get punishment yourselves, make others free and you will be made free, give, and it will be given to you, good measure, crushed down, full and running over, they will give to you, for in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. And he gave them teaching in the form of a story, saying, Is it possible for one blind man to be guide to another? Will they not go falling together into a hole? The disciple is not greater than his master, but everyone whose learning is complete will be like his master. And why do you take note of the grain of dust in your brother's eye, but take no note of the bit of wood which is in your eye? How will you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the grain of dust out of your eye, when you yourself do not see the bit of wood in your eye? O false one! First take the wood out of your eye and then you will see clearly to take the dust out of your brother's eye. For no good tree gives bad fruit, and no bad tree gives good fruit. For every tree is judged by its fruit. Men do not get figs from thorns, 
or grapes from blackberry plants. The good man, out of the good store of his heart, gives good things, and the evil man, out of his evil store, gives evil, for out of the full store of the heart come the words of the mouth. Why do you say to me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Everyone who comes to me and gives ear to my words and does them, I will make clear to you what he is like, he is like a man building a house, who went deep and put the base of it on a rock, and when the water came up and the river was driving against that house, it was not moved, because the building was good, but he who gives hearing, without doing, is like a man building a house on the earth without a base for it, and when the force of the river came against it, straight away it came down, and the destruction of that house was great. Chapter 7 After he had come to the end of all his words in the hearing of the people, he went into Capernaum. And a certain captain had a servant who was very dear to him, this servant was ill and near to death. And when news of Jesus came to his ears, he sent to him rulers of the Jews, requesting that he would come and make his servant well. And they, when they came to Jesus, made their request warmly, saying, It is right for you to do this for him, because he is a friend to our nation and himself has put up a synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. And when he was not far from the house, the man sent friends to him, saying, Lord, do not give yourself trouble, for I am not important enough for you to come into my house, and I had the feeling that I was not even good enough to come to you, but say the word only, and my servant will be well. For I, myself, am a man under authority, having men under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when these things were said to Jesus, he was surprised, and, turning to the mass of people coming after him, said, I have not seen such great faith, no, not in Israel. And when those who were sent came back to the house they saw that the servant was well. And it came about, after a little time, that he went to a town named Nine, and his disciples went with him and a great number of people. Now when he came near the door of the town, a dead man was being taken out, the only son of his mother, who was a widow, and a great number of people from the town were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had pity on her and said to her, Be not sad. And he came near, and put his hand on the stretcher where the dead man was, and those who were moving it came to a stop. And he said, Young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man got up, and words came from his lips. And he gave him to his mother, and fear came on all, and they gave praise to God, saying, A great prophet is among us, and, God has given thought to his people. And this story about him went through all Judea and the places round about. And the disciples of John gave him an account of all these things. Then John sent two of his disciples to the Lord, saying, Are you he who is to come, or are we waiting for another? And when the men came to him they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you he who is to come, or are we waiting for another? At that time, he made a number of people free from their diseases and their pains, and from evil spirits, and to others who were blind he gave back the use of their eyes. And answering them he said, Go back and give news to John of what you have seen, and the things which have come to your ears, the blind now see, those who had no power in their legs are walking, lepers are made clean, those who had no hearing now have their ears open, dead men come to life again, and the poor have the good news given to them, and a blessing will be on him who has no doubts about me. And when the men who were sent by John had gone away, he said to the people, about John, what did you go out into the wasteland to see? A tall stem moving in the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man in soft clothing? See now. Those who have beautiful clothing and delicate food are in king's houses, but what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it has been said, See, I send my servant before your face, who will make ready your way before you. I say to you, among all the sons of women, not one is greater than John, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people, and the tax farmers, to whom John had given baptism, when they had knowledge of these things, gave glory to God, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were against the purpose of God for themselves, not having had his baptism, 
What comparison am I to make of the men of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who were seated in the marketplace, crying out to one another, and saying, We made music for you, but you did not take part in the dance, we gave cries of sorrow, but you were not sad. For John the Baptist came, taking no food or drink, and you say, He has an evil spirit. The Son of Man came feasting, and you say, Here is a lover of food and wine, a friend of tax farmers and sinners. But wisdom is judged to be right by all her children. And one of the Pharisees made a request that he would take a meal with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and took his seat at the table. And there was a woman in the town who was a sinner, and when she had news that he was a guest in the Pharisee's house, she took a bottle of perfume, and went in and took her place at the back of him, near his feet, weeping, so that his feet were washed with the drops from her eyes, and with her hair she made them dry, and kissing his feet she put the perfume on them. Now when the Pharisee in whose house he was saw it, he said to himself, This man, if he was a prophet, would be conscious what sort of woman this is who has put her hands on him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus, answering, said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, Master, say on. And he said, Two men were in debt to a certain man of business, one had a debt of five hundred pence, and the other of fifty. When they were unable to make payment, he made the two of them free of their debts. Which of them, now, will have the greater love for him? Simon, in answer, said, It seems he whose debt was greater. And he said, Your decision is right. And turning to the woman he said to Simon, You see this woman? I came into your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has been washing my feet with the drops from her eyes, and drying them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she, from the time when I came in, has gone on kissing my feet. You put no oil on my head, but she has put perfume on my feet. And so I say to you, she will have forgiveness for her sins which are great in number, because of her great love, but he who has small need of forgiveness gives little love. And he said to her, You have forgiveness for your sins. And those who were seated at table with him said to themselves, Who is this who even gives forgiveness of sins? And he said to the woman, By your faith you have salvation, go in peace. Chapter 8 And it came about, after a short time, that he went through town and country giving the good news of the kingdom of God, and with him were the twelve, and certain women who had been made free from evil spirits and diseases, Mary named Magdalene, from whom seven evil spirits had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's chief house servant, and Susanna and a number of others, who gave them of their wealth for his needs. And when a great number of people came together, and men from every town went out to him, he gave them teaching in the form of a story, a man went out to put in seed, and while he was doing it, some was dropped by the wayside and it was crushed underfoot, and was taken by the birds of heaven, and some went on the rock, and when it came up it became dry and dead because it had no water. And some went among the thorns, and the thorns came up with it and it had no room for growth. And some falling on good earth, came up and gave fruit a hundred times as much. And with these words he said in a loud voice, He who has ears, let him give ear. And his disciples put questions to him about the point of the story. And he said, To you is given knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to the others, they are given in stories, so that seeing, they may not see, and though they give hearing, the sense will not be clear to them. Now this is the point of the story, the seed is the word of God. Those by the side of the road are those who have given hearing, then the evil one comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not have faith and get salvation. And those on the rock are those who with joy give hearing to the word, but having no root, they have faith for a time, and when the test comes they give up. And those which went among thorns are those who have given hearing, and go on their way, but they are overcome by cares and wealth and the pleasures of life, and they give no fruit. And those in the good earth are those who, having given ear to the word, Keep it with a good and true heart, and in quiet strength give fruit. No man, when the light is lighted, puts a cover over it, or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on its table, so that those who come in may see the light. For nothing is put out of view which will not be made clear, and nothing is secret of which the knowledge will not come to light. So take care how you give hearing, for to him who has will be given, and from him who has not will be taken even what he seems to have. 
and his mother and his brothers came to him, and they were not able to get near him because of the great number of people. And someone said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside desiring to see you. But he said to them in answer, My mother and my brothers are those who have knowledge of the word of God and do it. Now it came about on one of those days that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the water, and they put out the boat. But while they were sailing he went to sleep, and a storm of wind came down on the sea, and the boat became full of water and they were in danger. Then they came to him and, awaking him out of his sleep, said, Master, Master, destruction is near. And he, when he was awake, gave orders to the wind and the rolling waves, and the storm came to an end, and all was calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And fear and wonder overcame them, and they said to one another, Who then is this, who gives orders even to the winds and the water and they do what he says? And they came to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he had come to the land, there came to him a certain man from the town who had evil spirits, and for a long time he had had no clothing on, and was not living in a house but in the place of the dead. And when he saw Jesus, he gave a loud cry and went down on the earth before him and in a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Do not be cruel to me, for he gave an order to the evil spirit to come out of the man. For frequently it would take a grip of him, and he was kept under control, and prisoned with chains, but parting the chains in two, he would be sent by the driving of the evil spirit into waste places. And Jesus said to him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for a number of spirits had gone into him. And they made a request to him that he would not give them an order to go away into the deep. Now there was a great herd of pigs in that place, getting food on the mountain, and the evil spirits made a request to him that he would let them go into the pigs, and he let them. And the evil spirits came out of the man and went into the pigs, and the herd went rushing down a sharp slope into the water and came to destruction. And when the men who took care of them saw what had come about, they went quickly and gave news of it in the town and the country. And they went out to see what had taken place, and they came to Jesus and saw the man out of whom the evil spirits had gone, seated, clothed and with full use of his senses, at the feet of Jesus, and fear came on them. And those who had seen it gave them an account of how the man who had the evil spirits was made well. And all the people of the country of the Gerasenes made a request to him to go away from them for they were in great fear, and he got into a boat and went back, but the man from whom the evil spirits had gone out had a great desire to be with him, but he sent him away, saying, Go back to your house and let them have news of all the great things which God has done for you. And he went away, giving word through all the town of the great things which Jesus had done for him. And when Jesus went back, the people were glad to see him, for they were all waiting for him. Then there came a man named Jairus who was a ruler in the synagogue, and he went down at the feet of Jesus, desiring him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years old, and she was nearer to death. But while he was on his way, the people were pushing to be near him. And a woman, who had had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had given all her money to medical men, and not one of them was able to make her well, came after him and put her hand on the edge of his robe, and straight away the flowing of her blood was stopped. And Jesus said, Who was touching me? And when they all said, It is not I, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the people are pushing round you on every side. But Jesus said, Someone was touching me, for I had the feeling that power had gone out for me. And when the woman saw that she was not able to keep it secret, she came, shaking with fear, and falling down before him she made clear before all the people the reason for her touching him and how she was made well straight away. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. While he was still talking, someone came from the house of the ruler of the synagogue, saying, Your daughter is dead, do not go on troubling the master. But Jesus at these words said to him, Have no fear, only have faith, and she will be made well. And when he came to the house he did not let any man go in with him but only Peter and John and James, and the father of the girl and her mother, and all the people were weeping and crying for her. But he said, Do not be sad, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they were laughing at him, being certain that she was dead. But he, taking her hand, said to her, My child, get up. 
and her spirit came back to her and she got up straight away, and he gave orders that food was to be given to her, and her father and mother were full of wonder, but he gave orders to them to say nothing about it to anyone. Chapter 9 And getting the twelve together, he gave them power and authority over all evil spirits and over diseases, to make them well. And he sent them out to be preachers of the kingdom of God, and to make well those who were ill. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no stick or bag or bread or money, and do not take two coats. And if you go into a house, let that house be your resting place till you go away, and if any people will not take you in, when you go away from that town, put off its dust from your feet for a witness against them. And they went away, journeying through all the towns, preaching the good news and making people free from diseases in all places. Now Herod the king had news of all these things, and he was in doubt, because it was said by some people that John had come back from the dead, and by some, that Elijah had come, and by others, that one of the old prophets had come back to life. And Herod said, I put John to death, but who is this, of whom such stories are given to me? And he had a desire to see him. And the twelve, when they came back, gave him an account of what they had done. And he took them with him and went away from the people to a town named Bethsaida. But the people, getting news of it, went after him, and he was pleased to see them, and gave them teaching about the kingdom of God, and made those well who were in need of it. And the day went on, and the twelve came to him and said, Send these people away so that they may go into the towns and the country round about and get resting places and food for themselves, for we are in a waste place. But he said, Give them food yourselves. And they said, We have only five cakes of bread and two fishes, if we do not go and get food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them be seated in groups, about fifty to a group. And they did so, and made them all be seated. And he took the five cakes of bread and the two fishes and, looking up to heaven, he said words of blessing over them, and when they had been broken, he gave them to the disciples to give to the people. And they all took the food and had enough, and they took up of the broken bits which were over, twelve baskets full, and it came about that when he was in prayer, by himself, and the disciples were with him, he put a question to them, saying, Who do the people say I am? And they, answering, said, John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and others, that one of the old prophets has come back. And he said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter, answering, said, The Christ of God. But he gave them special orders, not to say this to any man, saying, The Son of Man will undergo much and be put on one side by the rulers and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and be put to death and on the third day he will come back to life. And he said to them all, If any man has a desire to come after me, let him give up all, and take up his cross every day, and come after me. For whoever has a desire to keep his life will have it taken from him, but whoever gives up his life because of me, will keep it. For what profit will a man have if he gets all the world, but undergoes loss or destruction himself? For if any man has a feeling of shame because of me or of my words, the Son of Man will have shame because of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly I say to you, some of those who are here now will have no taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And about eight days after he had said these things, he took Peter and John and James with him and went up into the mountain for prayer. And while he was in prayer, his face was changed and his clothing became white and shining. And two men, Moses and Elijah, were talking with him, who were seen in glory and were talking of his death which was about to take place in Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who were with him. And when they were about to go away from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, having no knowledge of what he was saying. And while he said these things, the shade of a cloud came over them, and they were full of fear when they went into the cloud. And there was a voice from the cloud saying, This is my son, the man of my selection, give ear to him. And after the voice was gone they saw that Jesus was by himself. And they kept quiet, and said nothing at that time to any one of the things which they had seen. And on the day after, 
When they came down from the mountain, a great band of people came to him. And a man from among them, crying out, said, Master, I make a request to you, give a thought to my son, for he is my only child, and see, a spirit takes him, and suddenly he gives a cry, twisted in pain and streaming at the lips, and when it goes away from him at last, he is marked as from blows. And I made a request to your disciples to send it out of him, but they were not able to do it. And Jesus said, O generation without faith and false in heart, how long will I have to be with you and put up with you? Let your son come here. And while he was coming, he was pushed violently down and twisted by the evil spirit. But Jesus gave sharp orders to the unclean spirit, and made the boy well, and gave him back to his father. And they were full of wonder at the great power of God. But while they were all wondering at all the things which he did, he said to his disciples, Let these words go deep into your ears, for the Son of Man will be given up into the hands of men. But this saying was not clear to them and its sense was kept secret from them so that they were not able to see it, and they had fear of questioning him about it. Now there was a discussion among them about which of them would be the greatest, but when Jesus saw the reasoning of their hearts, he took a small child and put him by his side, and said to them, Whoever gives honor to this child in my name, gives honor to me, and whoever gives honor to me, gives honor to him who sent me, for whoever is least among you all, that man is great. And John, answering, said, Master, we saw a man driving out evil spirits in your name, and we did not let him do it, because he was not one of us. But Jesus said to him, Let him do it, for he who is not against you is for you. And it came about that when the days were near for him to be taken up, his face was turned to go to Jerusalem, and he sent men before, and they came to a small town of Samaria to make ready for him. But they would not have him there, because he was clearly going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, may we send fire from heaven and put an end to them. But turning round he said sharp words to them, and they went to another small town. And when they were on the way, a certain man said to him, I will come after you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have resting places, but the Son of Man has nowhere to put his head. And he said to another, Come after me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and give the last honors to my father. But he said to him, Let the dead take care of their dead, it is for you to go and give news of the kingdom of God. And another man said, I will come with you, Lord. But first let me say a last good day to those who are at my house. But Jesus said, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is good enough for the kingdom of God. Chapter 10 Now after these things, the Lord made selection of seventy others and sent them before him, two together, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, There is much grain ready to be cut, but not enough workers. So make prayer to the Lord of the grain fields that he will send workers to get in the grain. Go on your way, see, I send you out like lambs among wolves. Take no bag for money or for food, and no shoes, say no word to any man on the way. And whenever you go into a house, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will be with him, but if not, it will come back to you again. And keep in that same house, taking what food and drink they give you, for the worker has a right to his reward. Do not go from house to house, and into whatever town you go, if they take you in, take whatever food is given to you, and make well those in it who are ill and say to them, The kingdom of God is nearer to you, but if you go into a town where they will not have you, go out into the streets of it and say, Even the dust of your town, which is on our feet, we put off as a witness against you, but be certain of this that the kingdom of God is near. I say to you, it will be better in that day for Sodom than for that town. A curse is on you, Chorazin. A curse is on you, Bethsaida. For if such works of power had been done in Tyre and Sidon as have been done in you, they would have been turned from their sins, in days gone by, seated in the dust. But it will be better for Tyre and Sidon, in the day of judging, than for you. And you, Capernaum, were you not lifted up to heaven? You will go down to hell, whoever gives ear to you, gives ear to me, and whoever is against you, is against me, and whoever is against me, is against him who sent me. 
And the seventy came back with joy, saying, Lord, even the evil spirits are under our power in your name. And he said, I was watching for Satan, falling from heaven like a star. See, I have given you power to put your feet on snakes and evil beasts, and over all the strength of him who is against you, and nothing will do you damage. Do not be glad, however, because you have power over spirits, but because your names are recorded in heaven. In that same hour he was full of joy in the Holy Spirit and said, I give praise to you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have kept these things secret from the wise and the men of learning, and have made them clear to little children, for so, O Father, it was pleasing in your eyes. All things have been given to me by my Father, and no one has knowledge of the Son, but only the Father, and of the Father, but only the Son, and he to whom the Son will make it clear. And turning to the disciples, he said privately, Happy are the eyes which see the things you see, for I say to you that numbers of prophets and kings have had a desire to see the things which you see, and have not seen them, and to have knowledge of the things which have come to your ears, and they had it not. And a certain teacher of the law got up and put him to the test, saying, Master, what have I to do so that I may have eternal life? And he said to him, What does the law say, in your reading of it? And he, answering, said, Have love for the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and for your neighbor as for yourself. And he said, You have given the right answer, do this and you will have life. But he, desiring to put himself in the right, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus, answering him, said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he got into the hands of thieves who took his clothing and gave him cruel blows, and when they went away, he was half dead. And by chance a certain priest was going down that way, and when he saw him, he went by on the other side. And in the same way, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, went by on the other side. But a certain man of Samaria, journeying that way, came where he was, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity for him, and came to him and put clean linen round his wounds with oil and wine, and he put him on his beast and took him to a house and took care of him. And the day after he took two pennies and gave them to the owner of the house and said, Take care of him, and if this money is not enough, when I come again I will give you whatever more is needed. Which of these three men, in your opinion, was neighbor to the man who came into the hands of thieves? And he said, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do the same. Now. While they were on their way, he came to a certain town, and a woman named Martha took him into her house. And she had a sister, by name Mary, who took her seat at the Lord's feet and gave attention to his words. But Martha had her hands full of the work of the house, and she came to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has led me to all the work? Say to her that she is to give me some help. But the Lord, answering, said to her, Martha, Martha. You are full of care and troubled about such a number of things, little is needed, or even one thing only, for Mary has taken the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Chapter 11 And it came about that he was in prayer in a certain place, and when he came to an end, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, will you give us teaching about prayer, as John did to his disciples? And he said to them, When you say your prayers, say, Father, may your name be kept holy and your kingdom come. Give us every day bread for our needs. May we have forgiveness for our sins, as we make free all those who are in debt to us. And let us not be put to the test. And he said to them, Which of you, having a friend, would go to him in the middle of the night and say to him, Friend, let me have three cakes of bread. Because a friend of mine has come to me on a journey, and I have nothing to put before him, and he, from inside the house, would say in answer, Do not be a trouble to me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, it is not possible for me to get up and give to you? I say to you, though he will not get up and give to him, because he is his friend, still, if he keeps on making his request, he will get up and give him as much as he has need of. And I say to you, make requests, and they will be answered. What you are searching for, you will get, when you give the sign, the door will be open to you. For to everyone who makes a request, it will be given, and he who is searching will get his desire, and to him who gives the sign, 
the door will be open. And which of you, being a father, will give a stone to his son, who makes request for bread? Or for a fish, will give him a snake? Or for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If, then, you who are evil are able to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who make request to him? And he was sending an evil spirit out of a man who was without the power of talking. And it came about that when the spirit had gone the man had the power of talking, and the people were full of wonder. But some of them said, He sends out evil spirits by Beelzebul, the ruler of evil spirits, and others, testing him, were looking for a sign from heaven from him. But he, having knowledge of their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom in which there is division is made waste, and a house in which there is division comes to destruction. If, then, Satan is at war with himself, how will he keep his kingdom? Because you say that I send evil spirits out of men by the help of Beelzebul, and if I, by Beelzebul, send out evil spirits, by whose help do your sons send them out? So let them be your judges. But if I, by the finger of God, send out evil spirits, then the kingdom of God has overtaken you. When the strong man armed keeps watch over his house, then his goods are safe. But when one who is stronger makes an attack on him and overcomes him, he takes away his instruments of war, in which he had put his faith, and makes division of his goods. He who is not with me is against me, and he who will not give me help in getting people together is driving them away. The unclean spirit, when he has gone out of a man, goes through dry places, looking for rest, and when he does not get it, he says, I will go back to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he sees that it has been made fair and clean. Then he goes and gets seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they go in, and take their places there, and the last condition of that man is worse than the first. And it came about that when he said these things, a certain woman among the people said in a loud voice, Happy is the body which gave you birth, and the breasts from which you took milk. But he said, More happy are they who give hearing to the word of God and keep it. And when a great number of people came together to him, he said, This generation is an evil generation, it is looking for a sign and no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah. For even as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will come up on the day of judging and give her decision against the man of this generation, for she came from the ends of the earth to give ear to the wisdom of Solomon, and now something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will come up in the day of judging and give their decision against this generation, for they were turned away from their sins at the preaching of Jonah, but now something greater than Jonah is here. No man, when the light has been lighted, puts it in a secret place, or under a vessel, but on its table, so that those who come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye, when your eye is true, all your body is full of light, but when it is evil, your body is dark, so take care that the light which is in you is not dark. If, then, all your body is light, with no part of it dark, it will be completely full of light, as when a flame with its bright shining gives you light. Now, while he was talking, a Pharisee made a request that he would come to a meal with him, and he went in and took his seat at the meal. And when the Pharisee saw it, he was surprised because he came to the meal without first washing himself. And the Lord said to him, You Pharisees make the outside of the cup and the plate clean, but inside you are thieves and full of evil. O oh, you foolish ones! Did not he who made the outside in the same way make the inside? But if you give to the poor such things as you are able, then all things are clean to you. But a curse is on you, Pharisees, for you make men give a tenth of every sort of plant, and give no thought to right and the love of God, but it is right for you to do these things, and not let the others be undone. A curse is on you, Pharisees, for your desires are for the most important seats in the synagogues and for words of respect said to you in the marketplace. A curse is on you, for you are like the resting places of dead men, which are not seen, and men go walking over them without knowledge of it. And one of the teachers of the law, answering, said to him, Master, in saying this, you give a bad name to us as to them. And he said, A curse is on you, teachers of the law. For while other men are crushed under the weight of the rules you make for them, you yourselves do not put so much as one finger to them. A curse is on you. For you make resting places for the bodies of the prophets, 
but your fathers put them to death. So you are witnesses and give approval to the work of your fathers, for they put them to death and you make their last resting places. For this reason the wisdom of God has said, I will send them prophets and teachers, and to some of them they will give death and cruel pains, so that punishment may come on this generation for the blood of all the prophets which was given from the earliest days, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was put to death between the altar and the temple, yes, I say to you, it will come on this generation. A curse is on you, teachers of the law. For you have taken away the key of knowledge, you did not go in yourselves, and you got in the way of those who were going in. And when he had come out of that place, the scribes and the Pharisees came round him angrily, questioning him about more things, and watching him, for a chance to get something from his words which might be used against him. Chapter 12 At that time, when thousands of the people had come together, in such numbers that they were crushing one another, he said first to his disciples, have nothing to do with the leaven of the Pharisees, which is deceit. But nothing is covered up, which will not come to light, or secret, which will not be made clear. So, whatever you have said in the dark, will come to men's hearing in the light, and what you have said secretly inside the house, will be made public from the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, have no fear of those who may put the body to death, and are able to do no more than that. But I will make clear to you of whom you are to be in fear, of him who after death has power to send you to hell, yes, truly I say, have fear of him. Are not five sparrows given in exchange for two farthings? And God has every one of them in mind, but even the hairs of your head are numbered. Have no fear, you are of more value than a flock of sparrows. And I say to you that to everyone who gives witness to me before men, the Son of Man will give witness before the angels of God. But if anyone says before men that he has no knowledge of me, I will say that I have no knowledge of him before the angels of God. And if anyone says a word against the Son of Man, he will have forgiveness. But for him who says evil words against the Holy Spirit, there will be no forgiveness. And when they take you before the synagogues and the authorities and the rulers, take no thought about what answers you will give, or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will make clear to you in that very hour what to say. And one of the people said to him, Master, give an order to my brother to make division of the heritage with me. But he said, Man, who made me a judge or a maker of decisions for you? And he said to them, Take care to keep yourselves free from the desire for property, for a man's life is not made up of the number of things which he has. And he said to them, In a story, the land of a certain man of great wealth was very fertile, and he said to himself, What is to be done? for I have no place in which to put all my fruit. And he said, This I will do, I will take down my storehouses and make greater ones, and there I will put all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have a great amount of goods in store, enough for a number of years, be at rest, take food and wine and be happy. But God said to him, You foolish one, tonight I will take your soul from you, and who then will be the owner of all the things which you have got together? So that is what comes to the man who gets wealth for himself, and has not wealth in the eyes of God. And he said to his disciples, For this reason I say to you, take no thought for your life, about what food you will take, or for your body, how it may be clothed. Is not life more than food, and the body than its clothing? Give thought to the ravens, they do not put seeds into the earth, or get together grain, they have no storehouses or buildings, and God gives them their food of how much greater value are you than the birds? And which of you by taking thought is able to make himself any taller? If, then, you are not able to do even that which is least, why are you troubled about the rest? Give thought to the flowers, they do no work, they make no thread, and still I say to you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God gives such clothing to the grass in the field, which today is living, and tomorrow will be burned in the oven, how much more will he give clothing to you, O men of little faith? And do not give over much thought to your food and drink, and let not your mind be full of doubts, for the nations of the world go in search of all these things, but your Father has knowledge that you have need of them. But let your chief care be for his kingdom, and these other things will be given to you in addition. Have no fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
Give what property you have in exchange for money, and give the money to the poor. Make for yourselves money bags which will not get old, wealth stored up in heaven which will be yours forever, where thieves will not come nor worms put it to destruction, for where your wealth is, there will your heart be. Be ready, dressed as for a journey, with your lights burning. And be like men who are looking for their Lord, when he comes back from the bride feast, so that when he comes to the door, it will be open to him quickly. Happy are those servants who are watching when the Lord comes, truly I say to you, he will make himself their servant and, placing them at the table, he will come out and give them food. And if he comes in the second division of the night or in the third, and they are watching for him, happy are those servants, but be certain of this, that if the master of the house had a knowledge of the time when the thief was coming, he would have been watching, and would not have let his house be broken into. So be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at a time when you are not looking for him. And Peter said to him, Lord, are these words said to us only, or to all men? And the Lord said, Who then is the wise and responsible servant whom his Lord will put in control of his family, to give them their food at the right time? Happy is that servant who, when his Lord comes, is doing so. Truly I say to you, he will put him in control of all his goods. But if that servant says to himself, My Lord is a long time coming, and goes about giving blows to the men's servants and the women's servants, feasting and taking over much wine, the Lord of that servant will come at a time when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not ready for him, and he will have him cut in two and will give him his part in the fate of those who have no faith. And the servant who had knowledge of his Lord's desires and was not ready for him and did not do as he was ordered, will be given a great number of blows, but he who, without knowledge, did things for which punishment is given, will get only a small number of blows. The man to whom much is given, will have to give much, if much is given into his care, of him more will be requested. I came to send a fire on the earth, and it may even now have been lighted. But there is a baptism which I have to undergo, and how am I kept back till it is complete? Is it your opinion that I have come to give peace on earth? I say to you, no, but division, for from this time, a family of five in one house will be on opposite sides, three against two and two against three, they will be at war, the father against his son, and the son against his father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Then he said to the people, when you see a cloud coming up in the west, straight away you say, there will be rain and so it is. And when you see a south wind blowing, you say, there will be heat, and so it is. O oh, false ones, the face of the earth and the heaven is clear to you, how is it that the signs of these times are not as clear to you? And why are you, in your hearts, unable to be judges of what is right? For if anyone has a cause at law against you, and you are going with him before the ruler, make an attempt, on the way, to come to an agreement with him, for if you do not, he may take you before the judge and the judge will give you up to the police, and they will put you in prison. I say to you, you will not come out of it till you have made payment to the very last farthing. Chapter 13 Now some people who were there at that time, gave him an account of how the blood of some Galileans had been mixed by Pilate with their offerings. And he, in answer, said to them, are you of the opinion that these Galileans were worse than all other Galileans, because these things were done to them? I say to you, it is not so, but if your hearts are not changed, you will all come to the same end. Or those eighteen men who were crushed by the fall of the Tower of Siloam, were they worse than all the other men living in Jerusalem? I say to you, it is not so, but if your hearts are not changed, you will all come to an end in the same way. And he made up this story for them. A certain man had a fig tree in his garden, and he came to get fruit from it, and there was no fruit. And he said to the gardener, See, for three years I have been looking for fruit from this tree, and I have not had any, let it be cut down, why is it taking up space? And he said, Lord, let it be for this year, and I will have the earth turned up round it, and put animal waste on it, to make it fertile, and if, after that, it has fruit, it is well, if not let it be cut down, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman who had had a disease for eighteen years, she was bent, and was not able to make herself straight. And when Jesus saw her, he said to her, Woman, 
you are made free from your disease. And he put his hands on her, and she was made straight, and gave praise to God. And the ruler of the synagogue was angry because Jesus had made her well on the Sabbath, and he said to the people, There are six days in which men may do work, so come on those days to be made well, and not on the Sabbath. But the Lord gave him an answer and said, O oh, you false men! Do you not, every one of you, on the Sabbath, let loose his ox and his ass and take it to the water? And is it not right for this daughter of Abraham, who has been in the power of Satan for eighteen years, to be made free on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, those who were against him were shamed, and all the people were full of joy because of the great things which were done by him. Then he said, What is the kingdom of God like? What comparison may I make of it? It is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and put in his garden, and it became a tree, and the birds of heaven made their resting places in its branches. And again he said, What is the kingdom of God like? It is like leaven, which a woman put into three measures of meal, and it was all leavened. And he went on his way, through towns and country places, teaching and journeying to Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will only a small number have salvation? And he said to them, do your best to go in by the narrow door, for I say to you, a number will make the attempt to go in, but will not be able to do so. When the master of the house has got up, and the door has been shut, and you, still outside, give blows on the door, saying, Lord, let us in. He will make answer and say, I have no knowledge of where you come from. Then you will say, We have taken food and drink with you, and you were teaching in our streets. But he will say, Truly. I have no knowledge of you or where you come from, go away from me, you workers of evil. There will be weeping and cries of sorrow when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets, in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves are shut outside. And they will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and take their places in the kingdom of God. And the last will be first, and the first will be last. At that time, Certain Pharisees came to him and said, Go away from this place, because Herod's purpose is to put you to death. And he said, Go and say to that fox, I send out evil spirits and do works of mercy today and tomorrow, and on the third day my work will be complete. But I have to go on my way today and tomorrow and the third day, for it is not right for a prophet to come to his death outside Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, putting to death the prophets, and stoning those who were sent to her, again and again would I have taken your children to myself, as a bird takes her young ones under her wings, but you would not. Now see, your house is waste, and I say to you, you will not see me again till you say, a blessing on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 14 And it came about that when he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees on the Sabbath, to have a meal, they were watching him. And a certain man was there who had a disease. And Jesus, answering, said to the scribes and Pharisees, Is it right to make people well on the Sabbath or not? But they said nothing. And he made him well and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, whose ox or ass has got into a water hole, will not straight away get him out on the Sabbath? And they had no answer to that question. And he gave teaching in the form of a story to the guests who came to the feast when he saw how they took the best seats, saying to them, When you get a request to come to a feast, do not take the best seat, for a more important man than you may be coming, and then the giver of the feast will come to you and say, Give your place to this man, and you, with shame, will have to take the lowest seat, but when you come, go and take the lowest seat, so that when the giver of the feast comes, he may say to you, Friend, come up higher and then you will have honor in the eyes of all the others who were there. For every man who gives himself a high place will be put down, but he who takes a low place will be lifted up. And he said to the master of the house, When you give a feast, do not send for your friends and your brothers and your family or your neighbors who have wealth, for they may give a feast for you, and so you will get a reward. But when you give a feast, send for the poor and the blind and those who are broken in body, and you will have a blessing, because they will not be able to give you any payment, and you will get your reward when the upright come back from the dead. And, hearing these words, one of those who were at table with him said to him, Happy is the man who will be a guest in the kingdom of God. And he said to them, A certain man gave a great feast, 
and sent word of it to a number of people. And when the time had come, he sent his servants to say to them, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all gave reasons why they were not able to come. The first said to him, I have got a new field, and it is necessary for me to go and see it. I am full of regret that I am unable to come. And another said, I have got some cattle, and I am going to make a test of them. I am full of regret that I am unable to come. And another said, I have been married, and so I am not able to come. And the servant came back and gave his master an account of these things. Then the master of the house was angry and said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets of the town and get the poor, the blind, and those who are broken in body. And the servant said, Lord, your orders have been done, and still there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the roads and the fields, and make them come in, so that my house may be full. For I say to you that not one of those who are requested to come will have a taste of my feast. Now a great number of people went with him. And turning round, he said to them, If any man comes to me, and has not hate for his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, and even for his life, he may not be my disciple. Whoever does not take up his cross and come after me may not be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to put up a tower, does not first give much thought to the price, if he will have enough to make it complete? For fear that if he makes a start and is not able to go on with it to the end, all who see it will be laughing at him, and saying, This man made a start at building and is not able to make it complete. Or what king, going to war with another king, will not first take thought if he will be strong enough, with ten thousand men, to keep off him who comes against him with twenty thousand, or while the other is still at great distance away, he sends representatives requesting conditions of peace. And so whoever is not ready to give up all he has may not be my disciple. For salt is good, but if the taste goes from it, of what use is it? It is no good for the land or for the place of waste, no one has a use for it. He who has ears, let him give ear. Chapter 15 Now all the tax farmers and sinners came nearer to give ear to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were angry, saying, This man gives approval to sinners, and takes food with them. And he made a story for them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if one of them gets loose and goes away, will not let the ninety-nine be in the waste land by themselves, and go after the wandering one, till he sees where it is. And when he has got it again, he takes it in his arms with joy. And when he gets back to his house, he sends for his neighbors and friends, saying to them, Be glad with me, for I have got back my sheep which had gone away. I say to you that even so there will be more joy in heaven when one sinner is turned away from his wrongdoing, than for ninety-nine good men, who have no need of a change of heart. Or what woman, having ten bits of silver, if one bit has gone from her hands, will not get a light, and go through her house, searching with care till she sees it. And when she has it again, she gets her friends and neighbors together, saying, Be glad with me, for I have got back the bit of silver which had gone from me. Even so, I say to you, there is joy among the angels of God, when one sinner is turned away from his wrongdoing. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me that part of your property which will be mine. And he made division of his goods between them, and not long after, the younger son got together everything which was his and took a journey into a far away country, and there all his money went in foolish living. And when everything was gone, there was no food to be had in that country, and he was in need. And he went and put himself into the hands of one of the people of that country, and he sent him into his field to give the pigs their food. And so great was his need that he would have been glad to take the pigs food, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, what numbers of my father's servants have bread enough, and more, while I am near to death here through need of food? I will get up and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have done wrong, against heaven and in your eyes, I am no longer good enough to be named your son, make me like one of your servants. And he got up and went to his father. But while he was still far away, his father saw him and was moved with pity for him and went quickly and took him in his arms and gave him a kiss. And his son said to him, Father, I have done wrong, against heaven and in your eyes, I am no longer good enough to be named your son. But the father said to his servants, 
get out the first robe quickly, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and get the fat young ox and put it to death, and let us have a feast, and be glad. For this, my son, who was dead, is living again, he had gone away from me, and has come back. And they were full of joy, now the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, the sounds of music and dancing came to his ears. And he sent for one of the servants, questioning him about what it might be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has had the young ox put to death because he has come back safely. But he was angry and would not go in, and his father came out and made a request to him to come in. But he made answer and said to his father, See, all these years I have been your servant, doing your orders in everything, and you never gave me even a young goat so that I might have a feast with my friends, but when this your son came, who has been wasting your property with bad women, you put to death the fat young ox for him. And he said to him, Son, you are with me at all times, and all I have is yours. But it was right to be glad and to have a feast, for this your brother, who was dead, is living again, he had gone away and has come back. Chapter 16 And another time he said to the disciples, There was a certain man of great wealth who had a servant, and it was said to him that this servant was wasting his goods. And he sent for him and said, What is this which is said about you? Give me an account of all you have done, for you will no longer be the manager of my property. And the servant said to himself, What am I to do now that my Lord takes away my position? I have not enough strength for working in the fields, and I would be shamed if I made requests for money from people in the streets. I have come to a decision what to do so that when I am put out of my position they will take me into their houses. And sending for everyone who was in debt to his lord he said to the first, What is the amount of your debt to my lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said, Take your account straight away and put down fifty. Then he said to another, What is the amount of your debt? And he said, A hundred measures of grain. And he said to him, Take your account and put down eighty. And his lord was pleased with the false servant because he had been wise, for the sons of this world are wiser in relation to their generation than the sons of light, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves through the wealth of this life, so that when it comes to an end, you may be taken into the eternal resting places. He who is true in a little, is true in much, he who is false in small things, is false in great. If, then, you have not been true in your use of the wealth of this life, who will give into your care the true wealth? And if you have not been true in your care of the property of other people, who will give you that which is yours, no man may be a servant to two masters, for he will have hate for the one and love for the other, or he will keep to the one and have no respect for the other. You may not be servants of God and of wealth. And the Pharisees, who had a great love of money, hearing these things, were making sport of him. And he said, You take care to seem right in the eyes of men. But God sees your hearts, and those things which are important in the opinion of men, are evil in the eyes of God. The law and the prophets were till John, but then came the preaching of the kingdom of God, and everyone makes his way into it by force. But heaven and earth will come to an end before the smallest letter of the law may be dropped out. Everyone who puts away his wife and takes another, is a false husband, and he who is married to a woman whose husband has put her away, is no true husband to her. Now there was a certain man of great wealth, who was dressed in fair clothing of purple and delicate linen, and was shining and glad every day, and a certain poor man, named Lazarus, was stretched out at his door, full of wounds, desiring the broken bits of food which came from the table of the man of wealth, and even the dogs came and put their tongues on his wounds. And in time the poor man came to his end, and angels took him to Abraham's breast. And the man of wealth came to his end and was put in the earth, and in hell, being in great pain, lifting up his eyes he saw Abraham, far away, and Lazarus on his breast, and he gave a cry and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, so that he may put the end of his finger in water and put it on my tongue, for I am cruelly burning in this flame. But Abraham said, Keep in mind, my son, that when you were living, you had your good things while Lazarus had evil things, but now, he is comforted and you are in pain. And in addition, there is a deep division fixed between us and you, 
so that those who might go from here to you are not able to do so, and no one may come from you to us. And he said, Father, it is my request that you will send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, and let him give them an account of these things, so that they may not come to this place of pain. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them give ear to what they say. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone went to them from the dead, their hearts would be changed. And he said to him, If they will not give attention to Moses and the prophets, they will not be moved even if someone comes back from the dead. Chapter 17 And he said to his disciples, It is necessary for causes of trouble to come about, but unhappy is he by whom they come. It would be well for him if a great stone was put round his neck and he was dropped into the sea, before he made trouble for any of these little ones. Give attention to yourselves, if your brother does wrong, say a sharp word to him, and if he has sorrow for his sin, let him have forgiveness. And if he does you wrong seven times in a day, and seven times comes to you and says, I have regret for what I have done, let him have forgiveness. And the twelve said to the Lord, Make our faith greater. And the Lord said, If your faith was only as great as a grain of mustard seed, you might say to this tree, Be rooted up and planted in the sea, and it would be done. But which of you, having a servant who is plowing or keeping sheep, will say to him, When he comes in from the field, Come now and be seated and have a meal, will he not say, Get a meal for me, and make yourself ready and see to my needs till I have had my food and drink, and after that you may have yours? Does he give praise to the servant because he did what was ordered? In the same way, when you have done all the things which are given you to do, say, There is no profit in us, for we have only done what we were ordered to do. And it came about that when they were on the way to Jerusalem he went through Samaria and Galilee. And when he went into a certain small town he came across ten men who were lepers, and they, keeping themselves at a distance, said, in loud voices, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them he said, Go, and let the priests see you. And, while they were going, they were made clean. And one of them, when he saw that he was clean, turning back, gave praise to God in a loud voice, and, falling down on his face at the feet of Jesus, he gave the credit to him, and he was a man of Samaria. And Jesus said, Were there not ten men who were made clean? Where are the nine? Have not any of them come back to give glory to God, but only this one from a strange land? And he said to him, Get up, and go on your way, your faith has made you well. And when the Pharisees put questions to him about when the kingdom of God would come, he gave them an answer and said, The kingdom of God will not come through observation, and men will not say, See, it is here, or, there. For the kingdom of God is among you. And he said to his disciples, the time will come when you will have a great desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it, and if they say to you, See, it is there, or, it is here, do not go away, or go after them. For as in a thunderstorm the bright light is seen from one end of the sky to the other, so will the Son of Man be when his time comes. But first, he will have to undergo much and be put on one side by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the day of the Son of Man, they were feasting and taking wives and getting married, till the day of the overflowing of the waters, when Noah went into the ark, and they all came to destruction. In the same way, in the days of Lot, they were feasting and trading, they were planting and building, but on the day when Lot went out of Sodom, fire came down from heaven and destruction came on them all. So will it be in the day of the revelation of the Son of Man, on that day, if anyone is on the roof of the house, and his goods are in the house, let him not go down to take them away, and let him who is in the field not go back to his house. Keep in mind Lot's wife. If anyone makes an attempt to keep his life, it will be taken from him, but if anyone gives up his life, he will keep it. I say to you, in that night there will be two men sleeping in one bed, and one will be taken away and the other let go. Two women will be crushing grain together one will be taken away and the other let go, and they, answering him, said, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the body is, there will the eagles come together. Chapter 18 And he made a story for them, the point of which was that men were to go on making prayer and not get tired, 
saying, There was a judge in a certain town, who had no fear of God or respect for man, and there was a widow in that town, and she kept on coming to him and saying, Give me my right against the man who has done me wrong. And for a time he would not, but later, he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God or respect for man, because this widow was a trouble to me, I will give her her right, for if not, I will be completely tired out by her frequent coming. And the Lord said, Give ear to the words of the evil judge. And will not God do right in the cause of his saints, whose cries come day and night to his ears, though he is long in doing it? I say to you that he will quickly do right in their cause. But when the Son of Man comes, will there be any faith on earth? And he made this story for some people who were certain that they were good, and had a low opinion of others. Two men went up to the temple for prayer, one a Pharisee, and the other a tax farmer. The Pharisee, taking up his position, said to himself these words, God, I give you praise because I am not like other men, who take more than their right, who are evildoers, who are untrue to their wives, or even like this tax farmer. Twice in the week I go without food, I give a tenth of all I have. The tax farmer, on the other hand, keeping far away, and not lifting up even his eyes to heaven, made signs of grief and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I say to you, this man went back to his house with God's approval, and not the other, for everyone who makes himself high will be made low and whoever makes himself low will be made high. And they took their children to him, so that he might put his hands on them, but when the disciples saw it, they said sharp words to them but Jesus sent for them, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not keep them away, for if such is the kingdom of heaven. Truly I say to you, whoever does not put himself under the kingdom of God like a little child, will not come into it at all. And a certain ruler put a question to him, saying, Good master, what have I to do so that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you say that I am good? No one is good, but only God. You have knowledge of what the law says, do not be untrue to your wife, do not put anyone to death, do not take what is not yours, do not give false witness, give honor to your father and mother. And he said, All these things I have done from the time when I was a boy. And Jesus, hearing it, said to him, One thing you still have need of, get money for your goods, and give it away to the poor, and you will have wealth in heaven, and come after me. But at these words he became very sad for he had great wealth. And Jesus, looking at him, said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to get into the kingdom of God. It is simpler for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a man who has much money to come into the kingdom of God. And those who were present said, Then who may have salvation? But he said, Things which are not possible with man are possible with God. And Peter said, See, we have given up what is ours to come after you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no man who has given up house or wife or brothers or father or mother or children, because of the kingdom of God, who will not get much more in this time, and in the world to come, eternal life. And he took with him the twelve and said to them, Now we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things which were said by the prophets will be done to the Son of Man, for he will be given up to the Gentiles, and will be made sportive and put to shame, and he will be given cruel blows and put to death and on the third day he will come back to life. But they did not take in the sense of any of these words, and what he said was not clear to them, and their minds were not able to see it. And it came about that when he got near Jericho, a certain blind man was seated by the side of the road, making requests for money from those who went by. And hearing the sound of a great number of people going by, he said, What is this? And they said to him, Jesus of Nazareth is going by. And he said in a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front made protests and said to him, Be quiet. But he said all the more, O son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus, stopping, gave orders that he was to come to him. And when he came near, he said to him, What would you have me do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may be able to see again. And Jesus said, See again, your faith has made you well. And straight away he was able to see, and he went after him, giving glory to God, and all the people when they saw it gave praise to God. Chapter 19 And he went into Jericho, and when he was going through it, a man, named Zacchaeus, 
who was the chief tax farmer, and a man of wealth, made an attempt to get a view of Jesus, and was not able to do so, because of the people, for he was a small man. And he went quickly in front of them and got up into a tree to see him, for he was going that way. And when Jesus came to the place, looking up, he said to him, Zacchaeus, be quick and come down, for I am coming to your house today. And he came down quickly, and took him into his house with joy. And when they saw it, they were all angry, saying, He has gone into the house of a sinner. And Zacchaeus, waiting before him, said to the Lord, See, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone wrongly, I give him back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, for even he is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to make search for those who are wandering from the way, and to be their Savior. And while they were giving ear to these words, he made another story for them, because he was near Jerusalem, and because they were of the opinion that the kingdom of God was coming straight away. So he said, A certain man of high birth went into a far away country to get a kingdom for himself, and to come back. And he sent for ten of his servants and gave them ten pounds and said to them, Do business with this till I come. But his people had no love for him, and sent representatives after him, saying, We will not have this man for our ruler. And when he came back again, having got his kingdom, he gave orders for those servants to whom he had given the money to come to him, so that he might have an account of what business they had done. And the first came before him, saying, Lord, your pound has made ten pounds. And he said to him, You have done well, O good servant, because you have done well in a small thing you will have authority over ten towns. And another came, saying, Your pound has made five pounds. And he said, You will be ruler over five towns. And another came, saying, Lord, here is your pound, which I put away in a cloth, because I was in fear of you, for you are a hard man, you take up what you have not put down, and get in grain where you have not put seed. He said to him, By the words of your mouth you will be judged, you bad servant, you had knowledge that I am a hard man, taking up what I have not put down and getting in grain where I have not put seed. Why then did you not put my money in a bank, so that when I came I would get it back with interest? And he said to the others who were near, Take the pound away from him, and give it to the man who has ten. And they say to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. And I say to you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from him who is not, even what he has will be taken away. And as for those who are against me, who would not have me for their ruler, let them come here, and be put to death before me. And when he had said this, he went on in front of them, going up to Jerusalem. And it came about that when he got near Bethphage and Bethany by the mountain which is named the Mountain of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the little town in front of you, and on going in you will see a young ass fixed with a cord, on which no man has ever been seated, let him loose and take him. And if anyone says to you, Why are you taking him? Say, The Lord has need of him. And those whom he sent went away, and it was as he said. And when they were getting the young ass, the owners of it said to them, Why are you taking the young ass? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they took him to Jesus, and they put their clothing on the ass, and Jesus got on to him. And while he went on his way they put their clothing down on the road in front of him. And when he came near the foot of the mountain of olives, all the disciples with loud voices gave praise to God with joy, because of all the great works which they had seen, saying, A blessing on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees among the people said to him, Master, make your disciples be quiet. And he said in answer, I say to you, if these men keep quiet, the very stones will be crying out. And when he got near and saw the town, he was overcome with weeping for it, saying, If you, even you, had knowledge today, of the things which give peace, but you are not able to see them. For the time will come when your attackers will put a wall round you, and come all round you and keep you in on every side, and will make you level with the earth, and your children with you, and there will not be one stone resting on another in you, because you did not see that it was your day of mercy. And he went into the temple and put out those who were trading there, saying to them, It has been said, My house is to be a house of prayer, but you have made it a hole of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple. 
But the chief priests and the scribes and the rulers of the people were attempting to put him to death, but they were not able to do anything, because the people all kept near him, being greatly interested in his words. Chapter 20 And it came about on one of those days, when he was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the good news, that the chief priests and the scribes and the rulers of the people came to him and said, Make clear to us by what authority you do these things and who gave you this authority. And in answer he said to them, I will put a question to you, and do you give me an answer, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they said among themselves, If we say, from heaven, he will say, Why did you not have faith in him? But if we say, of men, we will be stoned by the people, for they are certain that John was a prophet. And they made answer that they had no idea where it came from. And Jesus said, And I will not make clear to you by what authority I do these things. And he gave the people this story, A man made a vine garden and gave the use of it to some field workers and went into another country for a long time. And at the right time he sent a servant to the workers to get part of the fruit from the vines. But the workmen gave him blows and sent him away with nothing, and he sent another servant, and they gave blows to him in the same way, and put shame on him, and sent him away with nothing. And he sent a third, and they gave him wounds and put him out. And the Lord of the garden said, What am I to do? I will send my dearly loved son, they may give respect to him. But when the workmen saw him, they said to one another, This is he who will one day be the owner of the property, let us put him to death and the heritage will be ours. And driving him out of the garden they put him to death. Now what will the Lord do to these workmen? He will come and put them to destruction and give the garden to others. And when he said this, they said, May it not be so. But he, looking on them, said, Is it not in the writings, the stone which the builders put on one side, the same has become the chief stone of the building? Everyone falling on that stone will be broken, but the man on whom the stone comes down will be crushed to dust. And the chief priests and the scribes made attempts to get their hands on him in that very hour, and they were in fear of the people, for they saw that he had made up this story against them. And they kept watch on him, and sent out secret representatives, who were acting the part of good men, in order that they might get something from his words, on account of which they might give him up to the government and into the power of the ruler. And they put a question to him, saying, Master, we are certain that your teaching and your words are right, and that you have no respect for a man's position, but you are teaching the true way of God, is it right for us to make payment of taxes to Caesar or not? But he saw through their trick and said to them, Let me see a penny, whose image and name are on it. And they said, Caesar's. And he said, Then give to Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and to God the things which are God's. And they were not able to get anything from these words before the people, but they were full of wonder at his answer, and said nothing. And some of the Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no coming back from the dead, and they said to him, Master, Moses said that if a man's brother comes to his end, having a wife, but no children, his brother is to take the wife, and get a family for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, and the first had a wife and came to his end, having no children, and the second, and the third took her, and in the same way, all the seven, without having any children, came to their end. And last of all, the woman came to her end. When they come back from the dead, whose wife will she be? For all the seven had her. And Jesus said to them, The sons of this world are married and have wives, but those to whom is given the reward of the world to come, and to come back from the dead, have no wives, and are not married, and death has no more power over them, for they are equal to the angels, and are sons of God, being of those who will come back from the dead. But even Moses made it clear that the dead come back to life, saying, In the story of the burning thorn tree, the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, now he is not the God of the dead but of the living, for all men are living to him. And some of the scribes, in answer to this, said, Master, you have said well. And they had fear of putting any more questions to him. And he said to them, Why do they say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Take your seat at my right hand, till I put under your feet all those who are against you. David then gives him the name of Lord, so how is it possible for him to be his son? 
and in the hearing of all the people he said to his disciples, Keep away from the scribes, whose pleasure it is to go about in long robes, and to have words of respect said to them in the marketplaces, and to take the chief seats in the synagogues and the first places at feasts, who take the property of widows and before the eyes of men make long prayers, they will get a greater punishment. Chapter 21 And looking up, he saw the men of wealth putting their offerings in the money box. And he saw a certain poor widow putting in a farthing. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has given more than all of them, for they gave out of their wealth, having more than enough for themselves. But she, even out of her need, has put in all her living. And some were talking about the temple, how it was made fair with beautiful stones and with offerings. But he said, As for these things which you see, the days will come when not one stone will be resting on another, but all will be broken down. And they said to him, Master, when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these events are to take place? And he said, Take care that you are not tricked, for a number of people will come in my name, saying, I am he, and, the time is near, do not go after them. And when news of wars and troubled times comes to your ears, have no fear, for these things have to be, but the end will not be now. Then he said to them, Nation will be moved against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earth shocks and outbursts of disease in a number of places, and men will be without food, and there will be wonders and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will take you and be very cruel to you, giving you up to the synagogues and to prisons, taking you before kings and rulers, because of my name. And it will be turned to a witness for you, so take care not to be troubled before the time comes, about what answers you will give, for I will give you words and wisdom, so that not one of those who are against you will be able to get the better of you, or to put you in the wrong. But you will be given up even by your fathers and mothers, your brothers and relations and friends, and some of you will be put to death. And you will be hated by all men, because of me, but not a hair of your head will come to destruction. By going through all these things, you will keep your lives. But when you see armies all round about Jerusalem, then be certain that her destruction is near. Then let those who are in Judea go in flight to the mountains, and those who are in the middle of the town go out, and let not those who are in the country come in. For these are the days of punishment, in which all the things in the writings will be put into effect. It will be hard for women who were with child, and for her with a baby at the breast, in those days. For great trouble will come on the land, and wrath on this people. And they will be put to death with the sword, and will be taken as prisoners into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be crushed under the feet of the Gentiles, till the times of the Gentiles are complete. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth, fear among the nations and doubt because of the loud noise of the sea and the waves, men's strength will go from them in fear and in waiting for the things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be moved, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. But when these things come about, let your heads be lifted up, because your salvation is near. And he made a story for them, see the fig tree, and all the trees, when they put out their young leaves, you take note of it, and it is clear to you that summer is coming. In the same way, when you see these things taking place you may be certain that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not come to an end till all things are complete. Heaven and earth will come to an end, but my words will not come to an end. But give attention to yourselves, for fear that your hearts become overfull of the pleasures of food and wine, and the cares of this life, and that day may come on you suddenly, and take you as in a net, for so it will come on all those who are living on the face of all the earth. But keep watch at all times with prayer that you may be strong enough to come through all these things and take your place before the Son of Man. And every day he was teaching in the temple and every night he went out to the mountain which is named the Mountain of Olives to take his rest. And all the people came early in the morning to give ear to his words in the temple. Chapter 22 Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread was near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a chance to put him to death. But they went in fear of the people. And Satan came into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. And he went away and had a discussion with the chief priests and the rulers, about how he might give him up to them. 
and they were glad, and undertook to give him money, and he made an agreement with them to give him up to them, if he got a chance, when the people were not present. And the day of unleavened bread came, when the Passover lamb is put to death. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make the Passover ready for us, so that we may take it. And they said to him, Where are we to get it ready? And he said to them, When you go into the town you will see a man coming to you with a vessel of water, go after him into the house into which he goes, and say to the master of the house, The master says, Where is the guest room, where I may take the Passover with my disciples? And he will take you up to a great room with a table and seats, there make ready. And they went, and it was as he had said, and they made the Passover ready. And when the time had come, he took his seat, and the apostles with him, and he said, I have had a great desire to keep this Passover with you before I come to my death, for I say to you, I will not take it till it is made complete in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and, having given praise, he said, Make division of this among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not take of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of God has come. And he took bread and, having given praise, he gave it to them when it had been broken, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, do this in memory of me. And in the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament, made with my blood which is given for you. But the hand of him who is false to me is with me at the table. For it will be done to the Son of Man after the purpose of God, but unhappy is that man by whom he is given up. And they were wondering among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. And there was an argument among them about which of them was the greatest. And he said, The kings of the Gentiles are lords over them, and those who have authority are given names of honor. But let it not be so with you, but he who is greater, let him become like the younger, and he who is chief, like a servant. For which is greater, the guest who is seated at a meal or the servant who is waiting on him? Is it not the guest, but I am among you as a servant? But you are those who have kept with me through my troubles, and I will give you a kingdom as my Father has given one to me, so that you may take food and drink at my table in my kingdom, and be seated like kings, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has made a request to have you, so that he may put you to the test as grain is tested, but I have made prayer for you, that your faith may not go from you, and when you are turned again, make your brothers strong. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And he said, I say to you, Peter, before the cock's second cry today, you will say three times that you have no knowledge of me. And he said to them, When I sent you out without money or bag or shoes, were you in need of anything? And they said, Nothing. And he said to them, But now, he who has a money bag, or a bag for food, let him take it, and he who is not, let him give his coat for money and get a sword. For I say to you that these words will be put into effect in me, and he was numbered among the evildoers, for what has been said in the writings about me has an end. And they said, Lord, here are two swords. And he said, It is enough. And he came out, and went, as his way was, to the mountain of olives, and the disciples went with him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Make a prayer that you may not be put to the test. And he went a little distance away from them and, falling on his knees in prayer, he said, Father, if it is your pleasure, take this cup from me, but still, let your pleasure, not mine, be done. And an angel from heaven came to him, to give him strength. And being in great trouble of soul, the force of his prayer became stronger, and great drops, like blood, came from him, falling to the earth. And, getting up from prayer, he came to the disciples, and saw that they were sleeping for sorrow. And he said, Why are you sleeping? Get up, and give yourselves to prayer, so that you may not be put to the test. And while he was saying these words, there came a band of people, and Judas, one of the twelve, was in front of them, and he came near to Jesus to give him a kiss. But Jesus said to him, Judas, will you be false to the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were with him saw what was coming, they said, Lord, may we not make use of our swords. And one of them gave a blow to the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus, answering, said, Put up with this, at least. And touching his ear, he made it well. And Jesus said to the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the rulers, 
who had come against him, have you come out as against a thief, with swords and sticks? When I was in the temple with you every day, your hands were not stretched out against me, but this is your hour, and the authority of the dark power. And they made him a prisoner and took him away to the house of the high priest. But Peter went after them at a distance, and a fire was lighted in the middle of the open square, and they were seated together, and Peter was among them. And a certain woman servant, seeing him in the light of the fire, and looking at him with attention, said, This man was with him. But he said, Woman, it is not true, I have no knowledge of him. And after a little time, another saw him and said, You are one of them. And he said, Man, I am not. And after about an hour, another man said, With decision, Certainly this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I have no knowledge of these things of which you are talking. And straight away, while he was saying these words, there came the cry of a cock. And the Lord, turning, give Peter a look. And the words of the Lord came to Peter's mind, how he had said, This night, before the hour of the cock's cry, you will be false to me three times. And he went out, weeping bitterly. And the men in whose hands Jesus was, made sport of him and gave him blows. And, covering his eyes, they said to him, Are you prophet enough to say who gave you that blow? And they said a number of other evil things against him. And when it was day, the rulers of the people came together, with the chief priests and the scribes, and they took him before their Sanhedrin, saying, If you are the Christ, say so. But he said, If I say so you will not have belief, and if I put a question to you, you will not give an answer. But in the future the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they all said, Are you then the Son of God? And he said, You say that I am. And they said, What more need have we of witness? We have the very words of his mouth. Chapter 23 And they all went and took him before Pilate. And they made statements against him, saying, This man has to our knowledge been teaching our nation to do wrong and not to make payment of taxes to Caesar, even saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he said in answer, You say so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the people, In my opinion this man has done no wrong. But they became more violent than before, saying, He has made trouble among the people, teaching through all Judea from Galilee to this place. But at these words Pilate said, is the man a Galilean? And when he saw that he was under the authority of Herod, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem himself at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus he was very glad, having for a long time had a desire to see him, for he had had accounts of him, and was hoping to see some wonders done by him. And he put a great number of questions to him, but he said nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes were there, making statements against him violently. And Herod, with the men of his army, put shame on him and made sport of him, and dressing him in shining robes, he sent him back to Pilate. And that day Herod and Pilate became friends with one another, for before they had been against one another. And Pilate sent for the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You say that this man has been teaching the people evil things. Now I, after going into the question before you, see nothing wrong in this man in connection with the things which you have said against him. And Herod is of the same opinion, for he has sent him back to us, for, you see, he has done nothing for which I might put him to death. And so I will give him punishment and let him go. But with loud voices they said all together, put this man to death, and make Barabbas free. Now this man was in prison because of an attack against the government in the town, in which there had been loss of life. And Pilate again said to them that it was his desire to let Jesus go free. But crying out they said, to the cross with him. And he said to them a third time, Why, what evil has he done? I see no reason for putting him to death, I will give him punishment and let him go. But they went on crying out loudly, Let him be put to death on the cross. And they had their way. And Pilate gave his decision for their desire to be put into effect. And in answer to their request, he let that man go free who had been in prison for acting against the government and causing death and Jesus he gave up to their pleasure. And while they were taking him away, they put their hands on Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and made him take the cross after Jesus. And a great band of people went after him, 
and of women making signs of grief and weeping for him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, let not your weeping be for me, but for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming in which they will say, Happy are those who have had no children, whose bodies have never given birth, whose breasts have never given milk. And they will say to the mountains, Come down on us, and to the hills, be a cover over us. For if they do these things when the tree is green, what will they do when it is dry? And two others, evildoers, were taken with him to be put to death. And when they came to the place which is named Golgotha, they put him on the cross, and the evildoers, one on the right side, and the other on the left. And Jesus said, Father, let them have forgiveness, for they have no knowledge of what they are doing. And they made division of his clothing among them by the decision of chance, and the people were looking on. And the rulers made sport of him, saying, He was a savior of others, let him do something for himself, if he is the Christ, the man of God's selection. And the men of the army made sport of him, coming to him and giving him bitter wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, get yourself free. And these words were put in writing over him, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the evildoers on the cross, with bitter feeling, said to him, Are you not the Christ? Get yourself and us out of this. But the other, protesting, said, Have you no fear of God? For you have a part in the same punishment, and with reason, for we have the right reward of our acts, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, keep me in mind when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. And it was now about the sixth hour, and all the land was dark till the ninth hour, the light of the sun went out, and the curtain in the temple was parted in two. And Jesus gave a loud cry and said, Father, into your hands I give my spirit. And when he had said this, he gave up his spirit. And when the captain saw what was done, he gave praise to God, saying, Without doubt this was an upright man. And all the people who had come together to see it, when they saw the things which were done, went back again making signs of grief. And all his friends and the women who came with him from Galilee, were waiting at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a man of authority and a good and upright man, he had not given his approval to their decision or their acts, of Arimathea, a town of the Jews, who was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and made a request for the body of Jesus. And he took it down, and folding it in a linen cloth, he put it in a place cut in the rock for a dead body, and no one had ever been put in it. Now it was the day of making ready and the Sabbath was coming on. And the women who had come with him from Galilee went after him and saw the place and how his body had been put to rest, and they went back and got ready spices and perfumes, and on the Sabbath they took their rest, in agreement with the law. Chapter 24 But on the first day of the week, at dawn, they came to the place where his body had been put, taking the spices which they had got ready. And they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And they went in, but the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. And while they were in doubt about it, they saw two men in shining clothing by them, and while their faces were bent down to the earth in fear, these said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has come back to life, have in mind what he said to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man will be given up into the hands of evildoers, and be put to death on the cross, and on the third day he will come back to life. And his words came back into their minds, and they went away from that place and gave an account of all these things to the eleven disciples and all the others. Now they were Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them said these things to the apostles, but these words seemed foolish to them, and they had no belief in them. But Peter got up and went to the place where the body had been put, and looking in he saw nothing but the linen cloths, and he went to his house full of wonder at what had taken place. And then, two of them, on that very day, were going to a little town named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all those things which had taken place. And while they were talking and questioning together, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were not open that they might have knowledge of him. And he said to them, What are you talking about together while you go? Then stopping, and looking sadly at him, one of them, named Cleopas, said to him, 
Are you the only man living in Jerusalem who has not had news of the things which have taken place there at this time? And he said to them, What things? And they said, The things to do with Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, great in his acts and his words, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers gave him up to be put to death on the cross. But we were hoping that he would be the Savior of Israel. In addition to all this he has now let three days go by from the time when these things took place, and certain women among us gave us cause for wonder, for they went early to the place where his body had been put, and it was not there, then they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was living, and some of those who were with us went to the place, and saw that it was as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said, O foolish men! How slow you are to give belief to what the prophets have said! Was it not necessary for the Christ to go through these things, and to come into his glory? And he made clear to them all the things in the writings, from Moses and from all the prophets, which had to do with himself. And they came near the town to which they were going, and he seemed as if he was going on, but they kept him back, saying, Do not go, for evening is near, the day is almost gone. And he went in with them. And when he was seated with them at table, he took the bread, and said words of blessing and, making division of it, he gave it to them. And then their eyes were open, and they had knowledge of him, but he went from their view. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning in us while he was talking to us on the way, making clear to us the holy writings? And that very hour they got up and went back to Jerusalem, where the eleven and the others had come together. And they said to them, The Lord has truly come back to life again, and Simon has seen him. And they gave an account of the things which had taken place on the way, and how, when he gave them bread, they had knowledge of him. And while they were saying these things, he himself was among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were full of fear, being of the opinion that they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why are your hearts full of doubt? See, my hands and my feet, it is I myself, put your hands on me and make certain, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he let them see his hands on his feet, and because, for joy and wonder, they were still in doubt, he said to them, Have you any food here? And they gave him a bit of cooked fish. And before their eyes he took a meal. And he said to them, These are the words which I said to you when I was still with you, how it was necessary for all the things which are in the writings of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms about me, to be put into effect. Then he made the holy writings clear to their minds, and he said to them, So it is in the writings that the Christ would undergo death, and come back to life again on the third day, and that teaching about a change of heart and forgiveness of sins is to be given to Jerusalem first and to all nations in his name. You are witnesses of these things. And now I will send to you what my Father has undertaken to give you, but do not go from the town till the power from heaven comes to you. And he took them out till they were near Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he gave them a blessing. And while he was doing so, he went from them and was taken up into heaven. And they gave him worship and went back to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were in the temple at all times, giving praise to God.